Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 20 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, where, as you know, I love saying the word 20 about six times in a row in that sentence, so I'm excited to say that we're ready to roll today. Uh, hey, it's Create Day. I'm going to play with Create a little bit today. Uh, I've been kind of poking around through JEI, picking out the things that I want to make, uh, and show you guys to get started with Create. So Create is a super fun mod. Um, it basically is one of those mods where you put together a bunch of pieces that don't really do anything on their own to build cool contraptions, which is 100% a very good fit for Minecraft, right? Like, super awesome. It's what Minecraft is all about. Um, so Create is cool because it has lots of moving parts and gears and conveyor belts and all this neat stuff you can put together and you can automate a bunch of things in a very fun and rewarding kind of way. So let's get started today taking a look at Create. Uh, some of the first things we're going to need are going to be a water wheel. Uh, we're going to definitely need some andesite alloy. We're going to need a lot of wood. Uh, and andesite alloy is easy. It just comes from andesite and some iron nuggets or some zinc nuggets. And what I did is I cooked up uh, a bunch of zinc so that I would have a bunch of zinc nuggets. And that should be cool. And then I'm going to get myself uh, some andesite here. And then we can get ourselves what we need to start, which is the andesite alloy. Not too shabby. All right. So uh, how about without further ado, I'll come back in a minute here once I've made a, uh, a couple of uh, things and then we'll be ready to start. Does that sound fair? All right, be right back. All right, so the first thing you're gonna need for Create is a lot of space. Create is not the type of mod where you're gonna be able to fit it inside a nine by nine. It's just not gonna happen. So you should be prepared to have a large amount of space uh, within which to work. What I'm thinking I might do, um, is kind of like flatten out this area over here. You can see I've already kind of started. Um, I might, in fact, terraform it so that it's like flat all the way across here. Um, I think I might actually do that right now off camera a little bit. All I need to do is get some more stuff here and that should be fine. Yeah, let me, let me, let me flatten this terrain out. What I'd like to do is just kind of have like, maybe like a, a little bit of a step down like here right um so that you guys you can kind of like step down this way and then what i'm also thinking is like let's do this let's have kind of like that so that my laser can hit it and then if we if we run this correctly, what it should look like is going to be something like this. And then I get all this dirt, which I'm clearly going to need in order to maintain what I want to have. Cool. Does that work? I think that works. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. All right. So now just got to do a little bit of exchanging. We should have a pretty nice floor here. And by pretty nice, I mean mostly grass. But you know, you know by now what I mean, right? Like nobody's surprised, I hope. I hope nobody's surprised. I hope you're all pretty aware of what's going on on this, on this Let's Play at this point and how things operate. How are we doing for dirt? Actually pretty good. I don't know why you think you don't have dirt, because you 100% have dirt here, friends. Hey, that ain't so bad. Not too shabby. I mean, not perfect, but not too shabby. I'll take it. All right, and then you, and then that. And then it wouldn't be a bad idea to have that, like, step down, like I mentioned before. So let me clean that up, and then we should be in pretty good shape. All right, you guys will have to let me know how this looks, but not too shabby. A few bad guys over there, so we might want to throw down another Mega Torch or something. Aha! Got you. I'm liking this harm spell. It's not even like a little bit amped up and it's pretty good still. 
Not even a little bit amped up, and it's pretty good still. Look at that. I like it. I gotta say, I like it. So yeah, this is the plan, right? So nice, kind of flattish area. I think looking overall pretty good. Pretty good. Let's put away all this junk we got. Ooh, efficiency. Nice. Oh yeah, air shards. Elemental craft has a lot of this stuff. Um, I think they drop from mobs. I don't know. I don't know anything about elemental craft, but I've been noticing I'm getting these in my mob farm now. My mob spawner has uh, what I would probably call a healthy amount of these. And, you know, just FYI. I should clean out that chest. I turned off my mob farm because we got enough stuff for now. So in this area, I'd like to set up the following. I think over here is going to be like my create crafting area where I'll set up probably initially some manual crafting and then eventually some automated crafting where we can create all the things for create. Uh, there's a bunch of resources and stuff uh, that we're going to want to make uh, using things like the mechanical press and the depot and the mixer and all kinds of other stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the crafting mechanics. Then I want to work towards a tree farm. Uh, so let's start with the basics. So the first thing we want is some water wheels. Uh, that's just going to need some oak slabs or any kind of wood uh, and a large cog wheel that has a bunch of stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring... I've got a bunch of wood on me. Do we have much else in the way of wood? That eh, should be fine. Um, I might set up another one of those anchor dudes over here so that we can pop back and forth easily enough. Would that be? I feel like that would be cool. Uh, and doable. Definitely doable. Just a bunch of iron. Just a whole bunch of that resource that I don't have a lot of at the moment. Uh, and ender pearls, which I also don't have a lot of at the end. Uh, so, like, we're going to absolutely do something really stupid. Um, just saying. Just saying, we're going to waste a bunch of resources, neither of which do I have a lot of, but that's okay. You know Dyer. He likes his teleporty stuff. How about right here? This seems like a good place for Create Land to exist. Cool? And now I can just be like, home base, Create Land, boom. Super fun. I love it. All right, uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to start with a bunch of wood, like I said. We should start with uh, a simple crafting table that can serve as our starting point. So one of the first things we do want a lot of is cog wheels, right? So I'm going to turn half of you into buttons, and then we're going to get a bunch of cog wheels. Not nearly as much as I wanted, so let's get some more buttons and more cog wheels. 32 feels like a good point. Now, tiny cog wheels are also useful. Um, so let's get another 32 buttons for some mini cog wheels. And you'll notice that gets me about 32 cog wheels. Sweet. I'm going to get like a full stack of these, to be honest with you. That should be cool. It's all wood early on. It's all about the wood. We're also going to want water wheels. So we're going to want uh, some slabs here. I usually start with about... Th you can have as many as you want. I'm going to start with... Let's do five. Does five feel like a good starting point maybe six for a nice round number six times eight is 48 that feels like a pretty round number boom that's cool right i agree we're all in agreement here that that was cool right yeah lots of cogs do so that's cool the other thing we're going to want is a brown toolbox but we can't access gold plates just yet Technically, I can get them through Thermal, but I would like to get them through Create because part of what I like to do in these series is show you guys how things work. So I want to show you, I don't want to do stuff with Thermal to get stuff with Create. I want to do with stuff with Create to get stuff with Create. So there you go. Uh, now, did I have, I do have a spell that I could do for this that I think might make my life a little bit easier. Um, where is my torn notebook? Where indeed? I should have put it in there, but maybe I... Now, you know what? I might, might have left it in my mage tower. Yeah, I did. What I would like is... There is a tier... Was it a tier 2 glyph? Create water? Conjure water. Yeah. All I need is a water essence and a bucket of water, and we can conjure water out of magic, which sounds cool. Uh, so water essence was kelp, water bucket, and snow block water bucket and snow block perfect let me borrow one of these real quick and then you should give me some uh some source for that right 
do the thing. Source, please. Hey, there you go. Thank you. So if I'm not mistaken, how did we do this again? It's this, conjure water, select. Not enough EXP for this clip. Ah ha ha, yes, no, you're right about that. You're 100% right about that. Luckily, not a problem. So conjure water was, It doesn't actually say. Uh, let's try it this way. Requires five levels. Cool. See, he ate my water bucket already. So let me take my water bucket from here and put him back for the next water thing I want to do. And hey, glyph of conjure water, nice. So I don't think I want that to be a projectile. That seems way too dangerous, right? Doesn't it seem dangerous to have a projectile that will spawn a water block wherever it lands? I think so. So let's go to page seven, which is my next one. Uh, water will be a touch ability of conjure water. Great, sweet. Hey, speaking of bad guys, I would like to have the drops from. Oh yes, that's what's up. Oh yes, Ender Pearl for days. I can hear an Enderman teleporting over there too, which makes me super nervous. All right, so what we want to get is we want to make water wheels, and, and here's the cool thing about Create. Almost any item in Create has a tutorial built in. You hold W to ponder the item, and it will show you how to use it. So water wheels create rotational force, which is basically the energy source of Create. Right, uh, so you use water. Uh, the more faces are powered, the faster the water wheel will rotate. The wheel's blade should be oriented against the flow. So it's very important to pay attention to this, right? If you put it backwards facing the opposite way, it will not be as effective. So it'll still spin, just not as effectively. Look at that. How amazing and like ridiculous is that tutorial, right? It's literally the best. Cool, and you can like pause to identify pieces. So these are shafts, you can ponder them, the speedometer, the water wheel, subject of the scene. You can replay it if you wanna watch it again. I mean, this alone is just mind blowing. And that's just the beginning of Creed. So what we're gonna start with, I think, is going to be some water wheels, okay? And that'll be a good starting point for this stuff. So as we'll see, uh, the, the water wheels here are kind of facing this way. So I'm gonna start with, do I have a shovel of any kind? I feel like I should. I do, good job me. Good job, direwolf, having a shovel. Look at this, what even, what even is this? Who is this guy? Who is this guy with a shovel? And you have to do a little bit of, of cleverness uh, and paying attention to what you're doing. And that's what I like about Create, is you actually have to like think it through and plan it out and, you know, stuff. So let's start with making sure that any water that flows here is just going to flow straight into the water wheel in the correct way. Now, I'm pretty sure what we're going to want to have is something like this. And I... And I've made so many water wheels in my day, and I still don't do them perfectly because I always kind of forget the exact perfectionness of it. Uh, I bet if we ponder the water wheel, it might not be a bad idea. Maybe it'll show us the ideal setup on here. So you want it one block, the source block should be behind the water wheel. So I think where I have my, my stuff right now is where the source block should be, is, is my assumption. So I think here is where we're gonna want these guys to chill, right? Does that sound, that sounds more like it. And yeah, and then we're gonna want, and I'll exchange this for something nicer looking once it's in place. So now let's try out our new water spell, huzzah. Huzzah, that's cool. 
How great is that? I like that water spell. Just saying. I'm just saying. And now we've got rotational energy. Nice. We'll play with this once we have a way to read and measure the rotational energy. FYI, I'm pretty sure if you throw some soul sand back there, the one that creates bubbles underwater, and another water source block or two, you can get even more energy out of this thing. Uh, so you can really optimize this. It's literally the more sides that are covered with water, the better. Uh, but we'll play with it a little bit. And then there's much better forms of rotational energy coming up soon. Now, the other thing we're going to want is some shafts. And I would like to get about a stack of those. And shafts are great because they will convey rotational energy. You'll notice that when I click on the shaft here, it has a little arrow when I'm, when I'm mousing over it. This will show you the direction in which it will extend if you right click. So you don't have to get to the end of the staff and shaft and click there. You can literally hold right click here and it'll extend it all. How great is that? Now the other thing we're going to want is a wrench. Uh, once we have the wrench, life will be better for us. But for now, I'm just going to clear out all those shafts I made. But one of the nice things about Create is once you have a wrench, you can shift right click on something that's Create and it'll just suck it right into your inventory. It breaks it instantly and it goes right into your inventory. Um, so pretty neat mechanic. I just realized I had junk in my inventory I had to get rid of. So hey, rotational energy, good. Um, let's talk about rotational speeds. Uh, you can mess with the speed of rotation by adding cogwheels. So if you place a large cogwheel here and then a small cogwheel on the corner, you'll notice uh, that the rotation of the small cogwheel is faster than the rotation of the big one. And that's just simple like rotational mechanics, right? Like real life works that way too. Uh, and you can extend this quite a bit actually. You can, you can put like the small cogwheel up here and then you know, a large cog wheel and a small cog wheel here. And then uh, a large cog wheel and a small cog wheel here. And you'll notice things get pretty fast. Now what's gonna eventually happen is as we add machines to this, um, the machines will cause stress. And stress is basically using up rotational energy. So rotational energy is a positive, stress is a negative. The faster the machines operate, uh, the more stress they're going to have. It's a multiplier. So your balance here is you need to design your systems so that, you know, they're fast enough for your wants and needs, but without overstressing the system. If you make all your machines operate at top speed, you're going to need a lot of rotational force in order for that to work. So be prepared. So now I want to make a few things. I'd like to make a mechanical press because that's one of the components we're going to need. I'm going to make a depot because that's what we can mechanically press things on. Boop, boop. I'm going to make a mechanical mixer because that's a nice little gadget to have. We're going to need some iron plates to make those, so we need to use our press. We also need a basin uh, to mix the mixer in, uh, and that should be pretty good for now. I think that sounds good. Yeah, that's enough. So off this rotational guy, right, here's what we want to build. I would like to have a depot with a mechanical press, okay? So if we had a depot here, I believe the mechanical press wants to be one block above it if I'm not mistaken. Now it's, come back here you. It's also accurate to say, so some machines you have to attach gears to, other machines you can connect your shafts to. I'm gonna connect this guy to a shaft. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this thing here and this shaft. And now the rotational force of the machine, or of the water wheels is going into the mechanical press ready to press things. How great is that? Uh, now to go along with this, we're going to want the mechanical mixer. We're going to need some whisks. Uh, so iron plates is what we're going to want. So I'm going to put five iron plates on this depot by right clicking them. And boom, we just made our first metal press. How cool is that? We made our first iron. Now, as we mentioned, if you want this to run faster, do the thing I did a minute ago with the cog wheels. There's other ways to do it as well as you get later into the series. Um, for example, I think there's uh, adjustable chain gear shifts, which will do something similar, um, which will make um, your speeds a little bit faster. So check this out, right? If you give it a redstone signal, it makes the next bunch of drives go a little bit faster. So it's kind of like, yeah. See that? 16 RPM there, the next ones are 32. So it's kind of the same thing, but in like a nice nifty way. So anyway, we've got this now, pop home base. Let's make our whisk. Great, awesome. Uh, the other thing I'd like to make is the wrench, which is gonna be three gold plates, and the toolbox, which is gonna be two gold plates. So that's gonna be five gold. 
and some leather back to create land we go okay nice now don't even try tick accelerating the stuff i don't think it really makes it i don't think it really works there's a few things i think you can tick accelerate it but not really not really because it's not really running based on ticks not really i don't think i might i don't know maybe I think last time I tried to take accelerating the stuff, I was like, eh, yeah, it doesn't really do much. So let's get our wrench, which is, you know, just super fun. Boom. And the toolbox, which I also love. Uh, the toolbox is cool, and I will tell you why. Uh, if we place the toolbox in the world nearby, and we open it up, and we put some stuff in there that we know we need a lot of. So I generally put, like, these kind of resources in there from Create. Um, the way it works is, I think I hold Alt on my keyboard as the default hotkey. And if you're standing within range, you can see all the stuff in it. If you're far away and you hold Alt, you're not going to see much. But if you're close-ish enough, you're going to see your stuff, right? Uh, and you can highlight things and then, you know, return them. So it's really neat. So whatever uh, hotbar location you're on, you'll see it's highlighted there. When you mouse over an item and let go of Alt, you're going to get the items out of... The toolbox if you mouse over to something else it's going to do that and then ultimately you can return all your items and it'll put everything back in the toolbox and it'll all be back in there how great is that now the next thing we're going to want is a basin uh to chill here and then kind of aligned with this guy we're going to want a mechanical mixer however this is one of those guys that really needs um to have a gear on it right so what we're going to want is a, either a small or a large gear i think will suffice i don't think it super matters i might be wrong but i don't think it super matters um which which one we get so let's do this let's do you know a couple things because this was this is the one that's always tricky to hook up because it needs a gear and it needs to be at this location so it's like if you want it to be right next to this guy it's a little tricky what we could make real fast is a gearbox because these guys are great uh and i'm going to turn these into vertical gearboxes so gearboxes are cool when you when you pipe items or when you pipe energy into it it just turns all the adjacent ones so we can demonstrate that here and by the way remember i said you could shift right click you could totally do that now oh how cool is that right so now we have rotation on all the three sides here uh and that's looking pretty good honestly um and then what we could set up is a vertical gearbox, which is similar, but instead of it being on all four sides, it'll be on two of the sides and the top and bottom. Okay. So now, remember, shift right click to pick up item. Uh, if we wanted to, there's a few ways we could hook this up. Uh, we could have a, I want, I want you to be in here too, but I think I just want regular gearboxes in here. Yes. That should be good. Okay. Uh, I might just put you here. And you here. That wouldn't work because then those two things, I well, it might work. Yeah, not great, though. Not great, though. And this is where the fun of Create comes in. Oh, hello. That's a fun way to do it. There's 16 different ways you could have connected these things. This is not the most efficient. It looks kind of cool, though, doesn't it? Um, it's possible that I could just do this. Can I stick these in the middle here? I don't actually know that I can. And it may not... Like, I can put these like this. Right? There's, 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 there's many ways we could have skinned this cat. All right? There's a lot of, there's a lot of cat skinning opportunities here, right? But I think I'm just gonna stick with this and we'll call it we'll call it a win. That looks good to me. Alright, so now both machines should be operating. And I don't want to hear from everybody who says dire that could have been done more efficiently. I know it could have been. We're just starting with the basics here. We're gonna have a completely different design when all is said and done. Alright, so now we're gonna get into some more advanced stuff with Create. So we've got the basic mechanics. There's there's something else that we can't quite make yet, uh, and that is the crushing wheel. And that's gonna be used to make a bunch of cool stuff going forward, but 
Uh, we'll get to a crushing wheel later because they're complex to make. You need to get into um, mechanical crafting for that. In order to get into that, we're going to absolutely need um, some brass, which uh, is uh, we have to make in, in here with a heated guy. So you know what? I should add this to my to-do list. I should make or get a blaze burner ready to go. Uh, we'll probably check that out next episode, though. What I want to talk about now first, though, is what we're going to make now. I would like to make a mechanical bearing. What this does is it's a nifty contraption. You can place blocks on it and then give it rotational force and the blocks will spin. There are ways to move blocks forward and backwards or spin them in direction. This is the one I'm going with, it's just spinning. Now you can add multiple blocks to these things uh, and all the blocks will spin. And you can link up a big contraption that will rotate and move. And that's cool on its own, but it gets even better. If you hook up certain machines, um, it'll automatically uh, use those machines. So take a look at this guy. Um, you can modify some of this stuff. Let's see, is this the one that shows the right stuff? Nah, this might be a different thing. This is showing you some more details. Um, let me find the right dude here. Uh, if this doesn't show, oh man, look at that. That's cool. What we're gonna make eventually is the mechanical saw. And this is the big one, right? Uh, let's put this, uh, do you have a mechanical saw dude here? Uh, yeah, there we go. This is what I'm gonna make, effectively. Uh, when saws are moved on a contraption, they can cut down trees. Not only that, they can cut down the entire tree all in one go, which is awesome. Uh, you can also put a chest on your mechanical contraption and it'll pick up the drops. So notice this time, there's no drop, it's all in the chest. How cool is that? Uh, so we're gonna be making a mechanical saw to harvest our trees. In addition to that, we're going to create a deployer. And deployers are neat because they can place items in the world. And guess what we're gonna place? I'll give you one guess. One guess. We're gonna place saplings. That's what we're gonna do. We're not gonna, pl we're not gonna plant flowers, we're gonna plant saplings. And if we build the contraption correctly, we should be able to place saplings and then harvest trees all in one go, and that'll be neat in my opinion. We'll see what we can come up with. There's a couple different ways to do it, and that's what I like about Create. There's a million different ways to build it, because uh, you can literally build it however you want. Uh, so let's start with talking about what we're gonna need. Now for the deployer, am I gonna need brass? Do I need brass for deployers? I don't think so. We will need rose quartz though. We will need rose quartz. Uh, in order to get that, we're gonna need some sandpaper and some rose quartz. And that'll be cool. Um, what else are we going to need here? We need some of that. We need some of that. This is all basic stuff. Basic stuff. Basic stuff. All kinds of good basic stuff. Um, yeah, no, I think we're I think we're in pretty good shape here. Uh, for the mechanical saw, we're going to need a few of these guys. Maybe like a dozen might be cool. Okay. Now, rose quartz is neat. Let's go get some quartz and some redstone. Yoinkin' home. So quartz and redstone, and what I'm going to get is just a couple of these, because I don't think we need a ton. Eight sounds like a good number, right? Because that's how many I got. Uh, and then sandpaper, which is sand and paper. Any questions? Any questions? Sand plus paper equals sandpaper. Okay, you hold sandpaper in your off hand and you hold the rose quartz in your main hand and hold right click. How cool is that? Now it's also using up the durability of the sandpaper as you can see in the bottom left and actually it just broke, so perfect. Uh, there's other ways you can do this. Uh, you can use the deployer with sandpaper in it. So if, if you have sandpaper in the deployer and apparently the enrichment chamber for mechanism has a recipe for this, so that's cool. Uh, but if you're looking to do it the create way, you want to give sandpaper to your deployer uh, and it will deploy over a uh, depot or over a mechanical belt, which mechanical belts are their own wonderful toys. Oh yes, they are the best. Look at that. And uh, mechanical belts will allow items to travel over them and you can absolutely uh, interact with the belts with all uh, semblance of machines. So you can easily have a bunch of stuff. Cool. So back to create land. Let's get ready to make the stuff that we need to make. So what do I want to make here? We're going to want to make a couple mechanical saws. We're going to need some more andesite casings. So give me those if you don't mind. Actually, we're out of andesite casings, so we should make a few more. 
it never hurts to have you know a bunch of these because creates one of those mods where you want a lot of components and all the components are cheap so just make a bunch and you'll have extra for later don't be stingy dyer's always stingy with what he makes trust me don't be stingy okay uh so we're gonna want a few of you and then we're gonna want some hands which are gonna actually they do need brass i had a feeling i would need brass i had a i had a feeling i would need brass so let's go find a blaze shall we actually i think if i yunk over here right so the first thing we're going to want to get in order to get uh the blaze burner is easy we just need a couple iron plates and a couple iron bars so you start with two iron plates over here and i'm imagining i've got iron bars somewhere i'm imagining that in my head i might be wrong i may not have iron bars somewhere I might be completely lying to myself, in which case we're going to craft some iron bars. You know what? One more check. I'm going to check in here. Iron bars? No. No worries. It's just, you know me and iron right now. We're not super tight. Okay. So then we get ourselves an empty blaze burner. This is a fuel source. If you place it underneath the basin, it adds to what the basin can make. So if we look at the um the the mixer here um with blaze burners you get different recipes right so you can do without a blaze burner you can do a bunch of shapeless crafting um with a blaze burner that's heated you can do some uh some more crafting which is really nice um and then there's like a superheated version of the blaze burner that you know gets a little intense so we'll look at that kind of as we progress through the mods so in order to get a blaze burner filled with a blaze guess what you got to do uh, if you guessed I gotta right click it with a blaze, then you are correct. So into the nether we go. Specifically the nether fortress. Uh, hello nether fortress. Any blazes nearby? Is this where I get to make a what in blazes? Kind of joke? Because that's usually what I do. Blazes, where are you? Blazes. see a couple things on the map ish see some wither skeletons so that's fun there's a blaze all the way out over there let's see if i can get him did he despawn on me how rude how rude could you be did you see that he despawned on me you're kidding me that is exceptionally rude. Though there's another one right there, so I'll take it. Yoink! Got him. Yoinks. That's how we roll. All right, let's get out of here. All right, so to make zinc, or to make brass, we need zinc and copper, okay? And here's the deal. Okay, we need to place our blaze burner underneath, and we have to feed him something to heat him up by right-clicking him with coal. I think you can hopper him in, maybe? I don't know if you can hopper in, but you can definitely automate it with create in some ways. Um, and then what you do is you drop one copper and one zinc, and what should happen is it should mix. Pretty sure that's correct. One copper and one zinc will make the brass ingot that I want. Copper, zinc, brass. Do thing. Do thing. Pretty sure that's it. Am I missing something here? Oh, it's not rotating with enough speed. Yeah, we need a little bit more speed to this guy. Uh, so some machines require a specific amount of speed. Uh, this is clearly one of them. So let's do this. What if I put this guy here and then this guy here? Now we're cooking. Look at that. Mixing it up. Mixing it up. Mixing it up. How cool. How cool. And I think 
we can throw multiple in there at once. And if you want, you can throw a recipe filter on the side. So by doing that, it says, hey, the only thing I'm allowed to make in here is brass. And it'll always make brass. Ah, that's awesome, right? Isn't that cool? I like it. Brass is happening. Yeah, and brass is kind of like your second tier of material in Create. It's, it's you know, you have to go into the nether, you have to, like, get some resources. It takes a little effort to get to the point where you can make brass. Now, remember, I'm making 16 of these at once, so keep that in mind. Uh, let's make, you know, 10-ish of these guys as plates. And I think that's probably about the wrapping up point for the episode. So let's wrap up here. We'll come back next episode. We will start with setting up a tree farm and create. And we might be able to do it all in one episode. Um, I'm going to prep a few items between episodes like the linear chassis and some of the deployers that we're going to want. And then when we come back next time, we should be ready to put this together and have a fully automated tree farm. We may, we may, we may even automate turning wood into charcoal. That would be cool. I would be down with that plan. All right. For now, Dalton, I sign off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.